2023 was an eventful year for the village of Bridgewood. I would like to take a few minutes to recount some of those highlights that made this year an exceptional one for our town. Let me begin by saying how incredibly honored I am to be serving on this village council. Bridgewood is, without any question, the greatest town in America. And this council is the greatest council I could ever hope to serve with. They are all hardworking people who care deeply about their community and are ready to sac sacrifice the valuable time they spend with their families for the good of their neighbors. All of the accomplishments of this village rest upon the foundation they have provided. And while I can never thank them enough, I will take a moment to thank them each individually. I will begin with our Deputy Mayor, Pam Perrin, without whose guidance and collaboration, it is fair to say that we might not have achieved anything at all this past year. She is always my first call on every issue and the person I want with me at every meeting that I attend. Next up, Siobhan Winograd, who is without any question the hardest working member of this council. She knows and understands the residents of this village and the issues we face better than anyone I know. And she is always ready to roll up her sleeves to find solutions to those issues. Evan Weitz, his insightful approach to every issue is one of the crown jewels of this council. He has an innate ability to get right to the heart of every problem we face. I rarely make a decision in most matters until I've heard from him. Lorraine Reynolds, whose input on every issue is as critical as anyone's on this council. She has a direct line to many in our community that is essential to what we do. That she and I disagree from time to time is perhaps the most important part of the process. You'll never get anywhere if you just listen to those people who agree with you. Make no mistake about it, she cares deeply about the residents of this village, overdevelopment, and safety, and I am fortunate to serve with her. We are five completely different people who are all rowing this boat in the same direction, the betterment of our village. I have learned much from each and every one of my colleagues, and I'm gr grateful to have the opportunity to serve with them. Will you all please join me and take a moment to give them a heartfelt round of applause. Thank you. And now I'd like to take a few minutes to review some of the accomplishments that these individuals have achieved in 2023. The very first item on our agenda last year was the establishment of hybrid access attendance at our council meetings. Hybrid access has allowed our residents to attend meetings from the comfort of their own homes. At our last work session alone, 15 people utilized hybrid access to discuss issues affecting them in our town. Whether it's because our residents are working late, have small children at home, or are physically unable to attend, the input we receive through hybrid access makes our council a better council and consequently, our village, a better village. Hybrid access is emblematic of this council's focus on resident involvement. In this regard, one of our most important achievements has been the improvement in communications to our residents overall. Transparency is just a word that people use. Communication puts transparency into action by actually getting information to the people who need it, our residents. This past year, we began a process. Here we go. Of getting information to our residents that has never been done before. It all started with hybrid access so people could more easily participate in our discussions. But then we also improved the acoustics in our meeting room and moved our meetings to an earlier start time so our residents didn't have to stay up too late 
to catch the entire meeting. And thanks to Siobhan Winograd, it continued with the village's new website that went live just a couple of weeks ago. Our new village managers focus on communications and getting information out quickly and accurately these past six months has brought a new dimension to our work. And now we will bring, be bringing that communication to a new level with the hiring of our communications director, Carol Bielkowski. As Keith said, we have restructured an existing position in the manager's office to focus on communications. Her mission will be to get information to our residents quickly and effectively. She starts next month, and we're very, very excited about it. And what's next? So we hired this new guy. Maybe you've heard about him. His name is Keith, his name is Keith Kazmark, and he's our new village manager. And now everything is different. He's a premium guy with premium skills. He comes to us with over 20 years of experience running municipalities, large and small. He is practical, experienced, dynamic, and responsive. Don't get me wrong. I have no idea how Heather Malander was able to handle two of the toughest jobs in our village, manager and clerk, for so long. This village will forever be in her debt for her dedication, hard work, and calm in the eye of every storm. But now we have the leadership troika of Keith, Heather, and Rich Calby, our director of Ridgewood Water and the director of operations. With Keith at the helm, this team will be running this $60 million corporation we call the Village of Ridgewood. We now have the best leadership team in the state of New Jersey. And make no mistake about it, leadership is everything. But this year, we also hired a new police chief, Chenzo Lyons, who, like his predecessor, Jackie Lufke, is making our police department one that we can all be proud of. You've probably seen him around town. He is out in the community every day, connecting with our residents and ensuring that our village is one of the safest towns in the country. Chenzo is another great leader we have serving our community. And what's that I just said? Oh yeah, leadership is everything. We are raising the bar in who we bring in to run this town. In our wonderful village, our central business district, like our amazing schools and tree-lined neighborhoods, are part of the heart and soul of where we live. As the world of retail evolves in this Amazon economy, navigating a path for our CBD is critical to our success as a community. Which is why this council has started on a multi-pronged approach to helping the central business district thrive for the benefit of the village. It started this past summer with the reintroduction of dining corrals to provide for more outdoor dining in warm weather, which we all love. And it continued with allowing that outdoor dining to go year round, as had been done for many, many years, so that when we get a warm day in the cooler months, we can all get out and enjoy some sunshine with our meal. And while we tried to bring back the incredibly popular pedestrian plaza, it didn't go as well as we'd hoped this past summer. We'll take another look at it, and with the input of our Central Business District Advisory Committee, see what we can do to make it work again. This was an important time for us. I want to point out that this council has the ability to acknowledge when an idea doesn't go as well as planned. We evaluate assess and adjust when the situation calls for it, and we admit it. But we also planted new trees throughout the CBD to make it prettier and are revising our zoning ordinance to make it easier for new businesses to open up in town. And with Pamela Perrin's firm hand on the wheel, we are beginning a new venture, something called a special improvement district in our CBD to provide the funding it needs to thrive without burdening our taxpayers at all. Next up, PFAS remediation is something we didn't see coming 10 years ago. 
But behind the leadership of Rich Calby, we are closing in on putting that issue behind us permanently. Let me begin by saying that this isn't a Ridgewood water problem. It's a nationwide and worldwide problem. Ridgewood water is now more than halfway through the construction of a $100 million PFAS remediation project that will lower PFAS to undetectable levels in our water supply. Undetectable. We now have two PFAS remediation facilities online, and last year broke ground on two more. We are slated to complete the entire project in 2026. When we do, Ridgewood Water will be the envy of every water provider in the country. That's because new pending federal regulations will be lowering the PFAS standards nationwide, and they will adhere to the standards that we have set here in, in Ridgewood. In the meantime, we've worked with all four towns in the Ridgewood Water community to dramatically reduce water consumption during this past critical summer season. By doing so, this has helped keep our PFAS levels as low as possible until our remediation project is complete. Next, in our tiny little town, and in collaboration with the county and PSENG, we paved over 32 miles of roads in 2023. I don't know if that's a record, but it is more miles than we have paved in any single year in the last 20 years. We are grateful to Chris Rudishauser, our village engineer, and his team for this accomplishment that we are all so proud of and that, the, and that the suspension of my car is incredibly grateful for. Right now in America, there is a national lifeguard shortage that had affected our beloved Graydon Pool in years past. I am proud and happy to say that Graydon Pool no longer has a lifeguard shortage. With aggressive recruiting and recognizing that the market for lifeguards has changed, we adapted to the changing marketplace and were able to fully staff Graydon this past summer and hope to do the same in 2024. Our thanks go out to Nancy Bigos and this Parks Department for their work on this incredibly important project. Next, under the auspices of Ridgewood's American Legion and with the help of the nationally renowned designer and architect team of Tess Giuliani and Lynn Brady. This council approved the establishment of a gold star monument to those families who've lost a loved one defending our country. Its anticipated completion date is September 2024. It will adorn Van Ness Park as a monument and a moment worthy of the sacrifice these families have made that we can all be proud of. And behind the efforts of one of our military family residents, Joan Montan, this past summer, our CBD was adorned with banners of village residents who have served our country. It was so successful, we are expanding it this year to include even more of the veterans who have called Ridgewood their home. But there's more. This year, the Council also recognized Juneteenth as a date to remember for its significance in the African-American community and our community as a whole. And while this recognition is significant, as the events of this past weekend commemorating Martin Luther King remind us, we have many miles to go before we rest. And just in case you might have missed it, the Council approved a plan for the property at Shedler Park, which was acquired way back in 2008. As was the intent of the council that purchased the property at that time, the plan includes a much needed full-sized playing field and a passive recreation area. Approval of this plan has not been an easy task. Some residents in the neighborhood were not in favor of a full-sized field, while others thought the property had revolutionary war significance. 
out of, the respe out of respect for the potential of such historical significance, this council conducted a full-scale archaeological study of the property. That study concluded unequivocally that there was no Revolutionary War significance at Shedler. The need for playing fields in our community, however, is undeniable. Unfortunately, every one of our major fields, Maple, Veterans Field, Stevens Field, and Stadium Field at the high school are all in the same floodplain. As the last few months have shown, flooding is getting worse and more frequent. The proposed field at Shedler Park which is not in a floodplain, is essential to the recreation of the thousands of children and adult residents in our town who utilize our fields every day. The last time a full-size field was brought online in this village was Maple Park. That was 1980. And yet, despite the pressing need, Shedler has been undeveloped for more than 15 years. I am proud to say that this council is now moving it forward and we hope to break ground later this year. Building this field in this location is truly a once in a generation opportunity that we cannot afford to miss. So in a nutshell, those are the highlights of 2023. But we have lots more on the agenda for 2024. This council is recognized as priorities the construction of sidewalks on West Glen Avenue, the repair of the footbridge on Kingsbridge Lane, the renovation of the bus station and pedestrian tunnel in our central business district, lots more paving projects, and the passage of an anti-nepotism ordinance, just to name a few. As important as any of these priorities will be an effort to formulate a plan with the Army Corps of Engineers to address the growing problem of residential flooding in our community. But perhaps our greatest achievement is the establishment of a respectful dialogue here at Village Hall. We are all neighbors who want to make this village that, as I've said, is the greatest town in America even greater. But as we know, we all have different ideas on how to do that. And that's okay. That's what our democracy is all about. But when we can do it respectfully, there is no limit to the accomplishments we can achieve together. We can't let every disagreement on an issue turn into a war of personal attacks. If we do, we can never move forward. As I said earlier, every mem member of this council and every council that came before us and will follow us in the years to come are hardworking people who care about their community and are ready to sacrifice the valuable time they spend with their families for the good of their neighbors. Treating each of them with respect is critical to getting things done and getting good people to serve on the council. There will always be disagreements on issues, large and small. The manner in which we disagree, however, will determine how and if we move forward at all. And personally, while I am appreciative of those who agree with members of this council on issues, I am especially grateful to those who disagree with us. Because we can't just hear from those who like what we do. We have to be open to those who will point out to us those things that we may not realize need to be done. Two excellent examples of that are the much needed sidewalks on West Glen and the repair of the bridge at Kingsbridge Lane. Your input as a community has been invaluable to us. Every day we see the divisiveness that has gripped this nation and ruined so many communities across America. We must all work together to make sure that never happens here. We have come so far this past year. Let's continue to make the discussion better in our town. Let's continue to show the country why Ridgewood is the greatest town in America. Thank you all so much.